Hello and welcome to Scientifically Speaking. Everything I've ever said, I've got from God. Um, every, anything I've ever written and put on video has come from God after visions in 2014 for three weeks, day and night, and then for months afterwards, but I had to learn how to get it under control. Anyway, none of this is mine, and everything I've ever done has stemmed from what I saw which was a key, a scroll, and it unlocked another scroll and outpoured all this information. And from understanding what this was, which was fighter pi, uh, just for a quick example, if this was the light spectrum, this, these two sides are the invisible, ultraviolet, infrared, but right here, this is the electrification zone. This is where we see things. This is where the rainbow is, and it's between phi and pi. So everything I've ever done stems from this, and none of this is mine, but it allows me to think differently to other people. So we're gonna get rid of the fallacy today of uh, the nonsense space stations working by centrifugal force in space, and I'm gonna show a working design for an actual space station. So today, we are gonna be Creating artificial gravity with a working the working space station. All right. We'll dispel a couple of myths as to why your movie uh, space stations don't work. Now, in the movies and in a lot of people's heads who don't understand uh, real forces. There are, there is a supposed centripetal, centripetal force and a centrifugal. Now, these forces do not exist. In your TV space station and NASA mines, funny that, that the movies uh, mimicked by NASA to, for how they think things work. The supposed centrifugal force sends you to the outside of a ring, a thin ring, as they show on the movies. And you can run around the inside of that ring this is rotating. It might be rotating that way, it might be rotating this way. Maybe it's rotating in opposition. It doesn't matter. You see, this centripetal, <laughs> this centrifugal force doesn't exist. There's a very easy way to prove it. Now, the only reason centrifugal force is supposed to exist would be if you put an object on something and spin that object. From the top, you will make this go this way, and this object will do something. Now, the inertial force is going to send it this way and this way because of this rotation. This is where the floor is going. It's going forward and to the left. Well, an equal and opposite reaction to that movement on this object is that it's going to go backwards and out. But it didn't. It didn't go backwards and out. The floor moved, changing the inertial moment of this object, and that object, the top of it, stayed exactly where it was, while the bottom moved with the floor due to the friction of the mass upon it. So the force didn't make this fall down, the floor moving and you being attached to it made you fall down. And the easiest way to prove this is if I have a ring that is hollow and we spin it. If I take a ball and I drop it one millimetre away from the inside edge will centrifugal force throw that ball outwards. 
No, no it won't. Because there is no centrifugal force unless you're attached to something and you only move because the floor moved away from you. So you'll just do the opposite. You are attached to the floor, your feet go one way, you fall over. So this NASA and movie idea will never work. Ever. Not ever. So I'm going to show you how a real space station should work. So what are we going to do? We're going to reverse engineer. And we're going to reverse engineer gravity. Now, I don't believe in the consequence of mass. I don't believe in Einstein's gravity. Obviously, that pen falls to the floor. It is the description that Einstein has offered that I don't agree with because all atoms are electromagnetic, and so I believe and understand gravity to be a case of electricity, electromagnetism, electrostatics. Basically anything to do with electricity is why you are held to this planet. So let's reverse engineer gravity. Okay. This is gravity. And it makes a body of mass go downwards. So if we were going to reverse engineer it, what do we have to do? Well, you would have to raise the floor. Now, there's a couple of problems with that, but we can overcome them quite easily. Now, a, uh, make sure we're in shot here. Sorry, okay. Uh, your normal space station is really thin. And you're on this bit, which again is nonsense. Okay, so that is basically a non functioning space station. They, th there's no force to send you out there. So this is nonsense. Now, it's also very thin. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to make my space station very wide. And we're not going to be running here. Not running here. Not standing here. Inside or outside, we are not on this bit. So, where are we? Okay, well this is your normal TV space station. Dude's there, which means it's non-functional. Non-functional. So, here's what we're gonna do with my uh, working space station. So, this is how my space station would be constructed. Not thin, but super wide. And where are we going to be? Okay. Well, let's just say, obviously this is uh, not detailed. I'm going to put my bloke on this floor. As this rotates this way, for example. So, let's have a think here. What's going to happen because he's on this floor? Well, the supposed force of centrifugal force will be activated, which is due to the inertial movement of an object, because we are attached to this floor. And it's going to throw the dude over to this wall. So, what do we do to the floor? Well, we could take it at a 45 degree angle here and stand him on that, but it's exactly the same as standing him on this. So he's always going to fly outwards to the wall and get stuck to the outside. Uh, but then as soon as he jumps up, gravity will stop and he'll float around. That's what I mean. It's not a force unless you've contacted it. So we have this floor here. This is moving at one mile an hour. The outside radius is moving at 10 miles an hour. So the inertial force is trying to make him fall that way. So what do we have to do to the floor? Well, as I said, we don't move the whole floor from here. 
change the distance, it goes to the five mile per hour distance, and then we go opposite the inertial angle. And so, my floor is going to be there, and I'm going to be standing here. So, what have I just done? I've changed my inertial moment, and anybody who's ever stood on a roundabout knows you have to lean in. At one spot, around here. At one spot on a little kiddies roundabout, you can stand like that. But it's only along this axis, which is why I've made it long. So in the middle here, we will have five miles an hour, seven miles an hour, 10 miles an hour. But I've shortened this distance by angling the floor upwards so that now it is lifting here and my inertial pressure is here. So I've changed how it's rotated. So I've cut down the centrifugal force of me being attached to the floor by moving the floor outwards, changing the direction. So let's just say that that would be six feet wide. That platform that I'm on with cupboards and stuff on either side. That's why I made it long this way. Because now I have a perfect form of gravity all the way along here. The speed doesn't change. This is 10 miles per hour. This is 10 miles per hour as it rotates. So I can now have many floors in this large corridor and then another one and another one and another one and it wouldn't even need to rotate that fast a man can jump up and then land it just takes about a second if you want to time yourself jump up and land it takes about a second so your rotation speed if you would jump up the floor would come up to meet you and you would base the rotation speed on how fast you would catch up. You would want to catch up within a second. So is that four miles an hour? Is that six miles per hour of the actual rotation speed? But I believe it would be quite low. So walking up and down here, you would have normal gravity because we changed the distance and angle here, which cut down on the difference in acceleration points from side to side, which stabilized it. And then we stuck it on the angle. We made it six feet wide, but 60 feet long. So now we have stable gravity within all of that. Whereas this will never work and you can't use this or a 45 degree angle because it won't work that way. So you have to make it. So the dude stands there and then the force is constantly that way because the force is constantly that way. And you have reverse engineered gravity and built a working space station which isn't thin it's actually really fat so you do have stable gravity thanks very much my name is Lee I follow the Christ and I'm showing you all the things that he shows me and uh, that's that just as a side point I already did this but then my 128 gig card decided to not read anymore and then it broke in half when I put it in the machine, but it had already told me that, I'm sorry, you now have a card error. So there goes another 128 gigs of information, and it made me have to do this twice. So um, yeah, the last two weeks have been uh, pretty horrendous for things going terribly, terribly wrong for me. Um, everybody's in good health in my family, so I thank God for that, that there's no physical attacks, but... Uh, everything to do with my information, whether somebody's deleting it online through my computer or my 128 gig card just fell to pieces in my hands after being told we can't read this and then it snapped in half. So um, yeah, we're quite fortunate I actually made this video because <laughs> I certainly didn't want to. What's the date today? 7th?